How's it going everyone? Sam Brabham here and welcome back to the F1 2020 My Team Career Mode where we're bringing Brabham back to the very top of Formula 1. In this episode we're at the Hanoi Grand Prix, a track that no one has ever been at before. From what I've heard it's a very tricky, tight and technical circuit with a really nice flowing corners. So it'll be interesting to see how we get on. We haven't really got many upgrades that are going on the car but hopefully for China in the next round we'll be able to get some upgrades in and start to really improve our car. We've got 2.85 million in the bank, and this is where I'd like to start making some upgrades. So I'm gonna do a build time upgrade for our aerodynamics department. Hopefully being able to bring those upgrades quicker will allow our car to develop at a faster rate of knots, and hopefully build us up the grid faster and faster. Heading into our practice programs now. I actually didn't record qualifying, uh, unfortunately, so you won't be able to see the footage of that, but I did record the bit at the end where we see where we qualified. Going through the practice programs, it took me a while to get used to this circuit. It's really tricky with the walls really close, lots of technical, long, sweeping corners that induce a lot of understeer in the car. And this car is not particularly great at the moment because we've just started out. So trying to get the most out of it was quite difficult. Into qualifying, I didn't really feel like I put my lap together all that well, but I didn't think I had anything left in the lap either. I was probably overdriving a little bit, trying to push too hard. But unfortunately, we couldn't get in to Q2. Uh, 17th, I believe it was, um, as I scroll down here. Yeah, 17th and Mick in 21st, which shows maybe I outperformed the car ever so slightly. He was quite a way off all weekend, actually, which is a shame. But P17, not the end of the world. If we can get a good start, we can make something happen Red in the River. race. Today, it's the backdrop for the latest round of the Formula One World Championship with a circuit specifically designed to encourage overtaking opportunities. I think we could be in for a cracking race today. It's a track that combines the bespoke design of a traditional race circuit with the tight, close barriers of a street track that our drivers race on today. 23 corners and a total distance of 3.4 miles. Watch out in particular for overtaking into the braking zone at turn 11. As always, a man with plenty of racing experience joins me in the commentary box. Today, it's Anthony Davidson. Tell me, Ant, you're no stranger to surviving the melee of Turn 1. So how do you keep out of trouble when there's so much going on around you? Well, the throttle goes both ways, Crofty. You've got to have the discipline not to try and win the race on the first lap. So always be prepared to lift early and give those around you more space. Trying to be the last of the late breakers with half a dozen cars around you may pay off from time to time, but it's also a great way to lose your front wing. With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Valtteri Bottas lines up on pole position, and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Vettel, Verstappen, Charles Leclerc and Albon, Sainz, Norris, Ricardo and Sergio Perez, Stroll, Ocon, Daniel Kvyat and Gasly, Raikkonen, Grosjean, Mr. Monaco and Kevin Magnussen, Giovinazzi, Russell, Schumacher and Nicholas Latifi. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. Ready for the Hanoi Grand Prix. Uh, we qualified okay, 17th, not too bad. I didn't really feel like I had anything else to give in the lap but we did beat our rival, Kevin Magnussen. So onto the race strategy, it says a two stop, and I think that's probably where we should sit, to be honest with you, because tire wear is pretty high here. You've got lots of long corners where the front particularly starts pushing way too much. So that's what we're gonna go for. I'll drop the fuel down just a little bit. I'm ready to go. Ready for the start of the race. Overtake engaged, five red lights, green away we go average start very average start there managed to find a little bit of a gap here might try and find follow Kimmy Didn't too much over still I was gonna try and follow him up the inside like that pretty happy with that move up to P11 now great start there in front of Norris. They're all so slow and I just thought, why not send it and hopefully. Checked up here. If I was closer, I'd try the same. But wasn't able to get that done. Norris right behind us. I'm not gonna let him go. There's no chance of us 
catching up with him based on how I was feeling on our race runs. I'll tuck in behind. Kimmy's coming in so quick. He's going to go inside. He's going to try and make a move on Norris now. A little check up. Short change. If we can latch onto the back of Kimmy and keep that pack behind us, we'll be in a great spot for the rest of this race, as we've done so. It means that they'll squabble behind us and then hopefully we can carry on right behind this pack here. So that they all check up quite a lot as a few are battling. See that gap we've produced the Kvyat now. there. When you get the rhythm of this section it feels amazing but when you get it wrong it is so horrible to drive because you're just offset. Reminds me a bit of the sweeping section in Mexico that we'll be going to later in the year. If they can keep squabbling then maybe we might be able to keep up but it means that Kvyat is definitely going to latch onto the back of us. Loads of oversteer there. Try and drop it down and get back onto the right line. oversteer out of there but luckily I've got DRS but Kvyat's gonna come streaming past us I'm gonna let him go inside I'm not gonna fight that okay, too hard we need to stay on form. he's got some oversteer so we'll switch back might as well if he's gonna make a mistake then we might as well capitalize on it just been able to freeze straight past me he locks up, but it's not a problem. If we can latch onto the back of him, I'll be happy. Perez is fast, he's on a quick car, so if we can stay with this pack here, I'm sure Kvyat will get onto the back of these. And if we can stay with him just enough, I'm not driving like that, I won't. Not a great exit out of there, but. I wasn't sure whether I wanted to send that at the inside or not and really cut Kivia out of it, but safety, car, safety, car. no safety cars out. Your pace. Keep your safety cars positive. out. I wonder what that's for. Oh, Hamilton's had a massive one. I'm going to make a pit stop this lap. I wonder how many people. We're going soft, soft, medium anyway. And our, our pit strategy is coming soon, and everyone's piled into the pits all at once. Absolutely everyone. <laughs> Literally every car is coming to the pits. Well, there's a few cars we might be able to get out of ahead here because a lot of people are going to be double stacking. So Ferrari gets out, so it's double stack on your left, another double stack there. Everyone's going to be double stacking. It'll be really interesting to see how we get out. And unlucky for us, we're the last car out here. If we can get out now, that is fantastic for us. We've got out ahead of a lot of cars. Now in P7 after the stops that is massive for us that's time to catch up we've had a great result there every car came into the pits and we've jumped all those cars in head that are double stacked we've managed to get out ahead of which is fantastic After those pit stops, I thought I'd have a look at where everyone is. And we're P7, Mix even got out in P11. 
all these cars here behind us had to double stack and it's meant that we've been able to get other than Lewis Hamilton who had the crash. God knows what's happened there. Shame we haven't got DRS on this lap. You can see we're not particularly good on a straight line. Wasn't close enough there to, to make a move. Short shift out. You can see the Alfa Tori is a fair bit quicker than we are really. case of just trying to do we battle to keep this spot here in the points or do we try and just concede the fact that they're going to be a lot quicker than us and just try and get the best result as possible to oversteer out there but it's the Red Bull of Alban out of the race That last corner is so tricky. Just staring at the wall on the exit. Come on, we need to get past. ERS, he doesn't have it. I'm going to use all our ERS now. It's just so much quicker in a straight line. So I nearly run into the back of him. He locks up. Signs and Ricardo, the man who's replacing Signs as well. With Signs going to Ferrari, a squabbling behind, which has allowed us to create a bit of a gap. We just don't have enough in a straight line. Whatever Honda have given them is a lot better than what we've got. Rightfully so, I suppose, but even still. Making it really difficult to get past him, even with that long straight. I have gone for a reasonable amount of downforce on this setup for this circuit, which probably is hindering us down the straights, but it means I can try and keep up through the corners, which to me is a lot more important when you got the use of DRS where it just helps you up the straight so as Kvyat comes in with us hopefully our team can do a good job and get us out in front I've got a little bit of rich mix to be able to use, so maybe on the outlap. As Mick comes in as well. Mick is in the pits. Mick in the pits. The Alpha Tori and the Racing Point dive in. Come on, boys, let's hopefully get a good pit stop now. 2.7. You'll be racing on the exit. Release, release. Not ideal. Back out in front with them, but that's okay. I'm alright with that. Over into the track. Not gonna have DRS, unfortunately. And that might be us going back into the clutches of Danny Ricardo in a much faster Renault. The only thing I can hope for is that Kvyat and Stroll decide to have a bit of a scrap and I can capitalize on that, but. I mean, the fact that we're even in the top 10 is outrageous. Got very lucky with that safety car and the double stacking that went on in the pit lane. So come through the S's. It's all about trying to be as precise as possible here. It's really easy to clip a wall, turn in a bit too early there. Just run wide. Bit of oversteer. Lift off, get to the apex and throttle down. 
Danny Rick comes past us. DRS open. So he locks up into here. Got a six second gap back to Ocon. If we can stay with Danny Rick here. Just keep in his DRS just for long enough. This might be our first points as Brabham Formula One on a track where I really didn't think we'd be quick at all because it's not a circuit I know the layout of or where to brake and how to drive it on the game so see so coming through the long left hander and the car just understeers so much I ran way too wide there and compromised my exit but we're doing good Hopefully we can keep this up. Four laps to go. Two and a half seconds now, back to Ocon. I'm fully expecting them to come past me. But if I can then latch onto the back of them, we struggle for traction on the exit of that long left-hander. We might be able to, even if we can sneak 10th, I'll be delighted with that. Considering where we qualified, We've been super lucky with that pit stop, but you've got to take it when it comes to you and still driven well, so see out this race. Short shifting, try and limit the slip on the rear tyres. Have a look at this, through the right hander, then the left, and as you can see, I'm fighting with it all the way around. Trying to just short shift the car squirming on me and Ocon is catching at a serious rate of knots. Use that ERS. It's going to come past us anyway. I'll let him go inside. This fight for the final points positions is going to be massive with Perez and Gasly right behind. Now we're going to have another duel with Gasly to decide who gets the final points of this race. This is your final lap, final lap of the race. Final lap. Perez is coming at us. I'm trying to just limit the amount of slip because the tyres are going right off. You can see understeering massively now. Fuel's going to be okay. Try to get a good exit out of here. ERS in. I'm not going to have DRS and Perez is going to come steaming past us. This Valtteri Bottas wins the Grand Prix. I'm staying inside here. I'm going to defend for my life. I want as many points as possible. He tries to send it around the outside. Block him off. Great move there. Still got a long way to go through this quick section if we can. Drop that in a second just to make sure. I'm struggling with through the exit there. Lift through the left. Little break down one. Another little break and down another into fourth. Fourth gear again. I've run a bit wide but that's alright, managed to get it stopped and slowed down, rotated, brushed the wall. Come on boys, let's go. Come on. Ninth place, our first points of the season. And god that was hard work. And driver of the day as well, so happy with that. We got so lucky, I cannot tell you how lucky we got with those pit stops that went on, all those cars coming in all at once. I can't believe every car on the grid came in at the same time. It's so stupid, but it is what it is. Valtteri Bottas, the winner. That safety car did change everything, and it changed everything for us because it gave us the opportunity and the gap behind everyone else to really progress. Danny Rick ended up in sixth, which is great for him. Oh, I'm delighted. I'm so happy with that. Our first points of the season and what a feeling that is to to in a, a, a track that 
I never thought we'd be able to do well on was such a great result. I'm so, I'm so happy with that result. Oh, I can't believe it. It feels so good to be into the points. A podium pass being upgraded. Another livery and another helmet. I'll have to check those out in a bit. Advance ahead. And how good does it to see our name in the top 10. Two points to our name, but that's a massive result. Started 17th. But that result is huge. It's huge. Very impressive indeed. It's time to check out the constructor's standings. Mick struggled in 18th. His pace was very, very poor. Very poor. I was able to do a 39.6 and he did a 40.5. It's not good for, for Mick with a driver decisions being made relatively shortly. Now uh, let's look at these highlights of that amazing points finishing race. Got a reasonably average start if I'm honest. Um, it wasn't the best but I'm really happy with how we ended up doing and off the line. I think we've passed one of the Haas cars, Mick swerving around there. I managed to pick a decent little gap here, force my way in, around the outside of one of the racing points. Through this tricky, tight right-hander. It was a great result. I still can't believe it. We were battling Giovinazzi and Raikkonen were pretty quick. And Alpha Tori behind us, I believe Kvyat was always an off option behind us he was always hassling us trying to get past but the use of that DRS really helped us throughout the race if, if you can stay within a second behind the car in front it gives you a fantastic opportunity to gap the people behind you but what a race we had I mean this closing laps were so close I knew they were going to come quick but I thought Perez was going to get us we managed to defend the position and I felt like I drove really well that race. I'm starting to get the hang of how the car handles and what we're doing and you can see us just, I always felt like a move was on into here uh, and it only took us to do it against signs to, to really make it happen but Danny Rick coming past. They got shafted at the pit stops massively. Big defence, little bit of contact. It looked like he tried to turn into the corner there as in he comes under. It's a bit of a Bit of contact isn't great, but it is what it is. And coming through the right left, this is where I felt really strong, actually. And I managed to send one up the inside. And Signs has tried to hang it around the outside as he clips the wall. I mean, you'd be silly to, I was, you know, over the halfway past his car, you'd be stupid to try and make that move happen. And he ended up having to pit. And I don't really take too much blame for that. You guys let me know what you think, but. I think if you're going to hang it around the outside, you've got to be in front and coming through this sweeping section, right on the last lap, across the line, and a points paying position for Brabham F1. The fans really seem to enjoy that. You made it look easy. You were cutting your way, cutting through, your way through the, the field race. during the race. I'm going to say it's so easy when the car handles like this. I'm going to boost up our. Uh, chassis department to try and boost their morale and their acclaim to try and get our upgrades a little bit quicker. Your team must be ecstatic with how you're performing. I'm team boss and I'm delighted. If one of my drivers, if I wasn't driving myself, finishing the points in the manner that we did, I think I'd be absolutely buzzing. So I'm going to say I'm really glad I can live up to their expectations, my own expectations, which are pretty high. I set high standards for myself in the real world, but obviously we've got to set them pretty high in this world as well. Our rivalry going up. Didn't get a podium finish, but can't be expected to do that. We're leading mags in the in that rivalry, which is fantastic news for us. Our team acclaim goes up massively and our driver acclaim goes up a huge amount there, which is fantastic news for us. And we're now level five and I believe we can bring in a new sponsor. Go to our activities now, we've got three days so I think we're going to go for a bit of weight training for Mick to try and get him as quick as possible because he did not perform well enough in that last race in comparison to us. And then later on in this session, I'm going to do a sponsor advertisement and then that'll be it for the activations in between now and the next Grand Prix. 
going to go through our build, team building exercises, the weight training for Mick. Ignition system has arrived, which is great news. We're going to skip the invitational event. Central under tray is done. We've got a lot of upgrades for this Grand Prix now. And our sponsor advertisement went great as well. That is fantastic news. I'm going to do an improved energy store sales upgrade. The weight reduction is going to be a massive help for us moving forwards as we try and progress through the grid and have our cars light and as nimble as possible during the races and in qualifying when it really matters the most. If we look at the R&D progress for all the teams, is that we've actually been able to see that Haas have now jumped us. So we are now the second worst team on the grid. But with these major, this major upgrade that we've got coming for the aero package, I think it's going to really benefit us longer term heading into Zandvoort and Spain and into the European season. That is going to be where I'm going to leave this episode for today. What a result that was. We managed to get our first points back in Formula 1 for the Brabham Formula 1 team and for myself. Mick, on the other hand, didn't quite perform well enough. And I know halfway through the season, we've got a decision to make. Do we bring him for the rest of the season or do we change him out? And if he's not performing, we might have to change him out and try someone new. Shanghai in the next round, it's gonna be a really tricky circuit, but we've got a few upgrades that have been put on the car. So hopefully they're working well and we can start to get some really good results and finishing the points more often than not. Thank you ever so much for all the support that has been shown on these videos so far. I really appreciate it. I'll leave my social links down below, like and subscribe onto the channel for more F1 2020 My Team content. I'm out. Cheers.